I always love a good listing of teachings when I stumble across them in the scriptures. You know, you get five of these or eight of those. Well, today we've got 14 buys. <laughs> these are the ways of getting pure love and getting great discernment or dispassion toward the world. He says the following things have been ascertained and declared by all of the scriptures of the world to be of the greatest good to mankind. All right, so the things we're going to list here have been determined by the world's scriptures to be the greatest things for mankind. First, to delight in the self, which is one with God, or to love God. And secondly, to be without attachment to anything else in the universe. So this idea of, of just dwelling within your own being, just knowing your nature as love, and having been practiced in understanding where that begins and ends, <laughs> and where ego is, and where mind and body, and how they all work together, finding that self, finding that ever content, ever free, ever pure self, and dwelling in there. He says to delight in the self, to delight in being, to, to know that this just from the very get-go, there's something worthwhile and beautiful and profound and deep here to be found and experienced, something to delight in, in being you. Then he says this true love, and this non-attachment must be developed gradually by these means. And here's the list. One, by faith and reverence. Faith that knowing that there's something worthwhile, knowing there is something to life besides just the material, just the constant looping of having to make the bed, mess the bed, cook the food, wash the dishes, day to day, these loops that we go in in life, that there is something meaningful behind it, having that faith that there is something profound and beautiful to be had and to be known in this life, and reverence, to not get trite about life, to not get uh, cynical or bitter about life, but to have a reverent attitude to it, toward it, because of its value and because of its potential for pure beauty and pure depth and, and, and the wonder of experience. By inquiry into truth, to look for what the purpose is, to look into yourself, to find out what is the truth of what you are, of who you are. What does this mean? What is all of this about? Touch that truth, that understanding by devotion to spiritual practice, you know, getting the tools and the skills that are necessary to do the job. Just like being a great artist, to learn to paint, you have to learn color theory and learn about canvases and about brushes and techniques and textures and all of the, those means of drawing to be a great artist. And with spiritual life also, these set of practices and tools for honing the mind, for disciplining, the body for putting things in subject to you so that you're not being led by the body or led by the moods of mind, but you are leading the body and you are leading the mind, that you are in control. By worshiping the great souls who have realized this higher truth. So really studying the lives that have gone before us, just like you do in any field of study. You study those who are the experts, those who have done it those who have walked this uh, path successfully and found uh, the divinity within themselves, seen God, to put it in the direct words. You know, that God is meant to be seen, meant to be experienced. It's not, he's not meant to be an imaginary friend. It's only at the beginning, the level of impurity and, and lack of controlled mind, that, that doesn't allow us to see or to know these things. We've mistaken the divine for all kinds of things. By taking delight in the word, by knowing the truth, the philosophies, hearing the words of truth, this is what life is, this is what love is, this is what a human is, this is what a fulfilling life looks like. These things, taking delight in those things. By shunning the association of the worldly, the material, 
those who are stuck in body-mind, who are only looking for pleasure, only looking for distraction, only looking for temporary comforts. To shun that, to do away with that, because there are more important, more beautiful things to be seen. Uh, these are the things we dive into by learning to love solitude. That is a beautiful little piece of freedom right there. To learn to love solitude, to be content by yourself. You don't need to be entertained. You don't need to be tickled and cajoled and dragged around showing the sights, seeing the sights of the world. That you're content. And this solitude is a beautiful, peaceful, tranquil, blissful place to be. By injuring no creature and by truthfulness, that inner integrity, that your words, your deeds, and your thoughts are all in alignment, and injuring no one with your words or with your actions or even with your thoughts. By studying the scriptures, all of the scriptures, all of the world's wisdom literature is there to help us on our way, help us to unfold to our highest potential as human beings. By control of the senses, that's it. So that you just don't keep running after temporary things and need constant refilling and constant attention and maintenance, but to actually go beyond those things to that self which is unchanging within you, which has followed you and been with you, which has been you <laughs> for your entire life, even as the body and mind have changed radically in all of that. By overcoming the passions, yeah, not flaring up in, angry, in anger every time you get cut off in traffic, by not cursing you know, everybody with different political ideals or different spiritual beliefs or no spiritual beliefs by judging and, and just getting all caught up in, in passionate things, things you can get heated about, but having the control and, and the understanding of the nature of ego to be separate and apart from that, to be steady, to be respectful at all times, to be, to be quietly firm in your knowing. By not speaking against other religions or any religion or any belief system, what's the point of speaking against that? Speak your highest truth, speak of love, speak of giving, speak of caring. Look for things in common with other people's paths. You know, compare your notes not to look for difference, but compare your notes to look for similarities. And you'll find how close together all of these different philosophical systems are. All of these different religious systems are. That if you look at the most important things, the top five most important things in life, you're going to find all the religions saying the same thing. It's not till you get down to the details, the unimportant things, the things that are methods and means for attaining the important things, that those things are different from religion to religion. By patiently bearing the opposites of life, hot, cold, up, down, day, night, you know, all of these, the dual, the dual throng, Swamiji says, by learning to live that middle path, not getting bounced around back and forth by all of the dual throng in the world. By bearing the opposites of life, such as pleasure and pain, success and failure, and still maintaining that equanimity of mind through that whole experience. By singing the praises and glory of God. By singing the praises and glory of love. You know, to really throw yourself into the joy of knowing these things, of the potentials of what will be uncovered and what will be known by looking at the lives of the saints and the seers of the past who have touched these things and finding that beautiful inspiration. He says, thus will arise love for God and non-attachment to the world, which is good because the world is only there as long as the body is there. So don't be attached to either of them. You are spiritual. You are something far greater something that is only manifested in the moment as this, but you exist in an eternity 